So welcome to this next lesson on 2D and 3D waves. We're going to carry on going through a bit of theory on 2D and 3D waves, and then we're going to look at some exam questions. So last lesson we started learning about Huygens principle, and Huygens principle was that basically the waves move forward in a way, or the reason that waves move forward the way they did was that every point on a wave front was acting as a source for every new wave. Now, just to remind you, a source of a wave, if I had to have a pond, okay, so let's say this is a pond, and here are some trees, okay, here are some trees, and I had to throw a rock into the middle of this flat pond, what would you see? You would see ripples going out from that pond, right? Okay, now, a source of a wave would be the, the, the rock being thrown into the pond is one source of wave, but it's only a single source. In other words, it's only one pulse, okay? So if I wanted to keep these waves moving forever, what would I need to do? I need to have to find some way to make this source happen. So what I could do instead of throwing in a rock, I could sit in the end and I could use a fishing rod, I can just tap the water. Okay, and if I tap the water, tap, 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 what am I going to do? I'm going to end up getting waves to keep going, okay? So that is a point source. A point source is a source which causes a single point that causes the waves to travel um, 360 degrees away from it, okay? Now, what it's saying, Huygens' principle is saying, is that every point on the wavefront acts as a new point source, okay? So therefore, every point on the wavefront is going to cause a new wavefront by acting as a point source, right? What happens then is that these wavefronts, because they're all being produced at exactly the same time from the same horizontal area, in other words, they're in line, they're going to have a period where they overlap and there'll be a new, what they call, tangential line, okay, a surface tangent to it, okay, in other words, there's going to be a point where these guys overlap so closely that effectively they form a solid line, okay, and that's your new wavefront. So your new wavefront is caused by a whole bunch of points in the old wavefront acting as point sources. That's Huygens' principle. And unfortunately, this is the definition you need to learn. And remember what I said to you guys, that what's important about this is that they, the science department thinks that since there's so few rules and definitions that have to be learned perfectly in science, they want all the definitions and rules to be learned perfectly. So you need to study the... It says every point of a wavefront serves as a point source of spherical secondary waves, okay? After a time t, the new position of the wavefront will be of a, will be that of a surface tangent to the secondary waves, okay? Right, so now let's talk about diffraction. Diffraction is the ability, that's us now, now, next lesson, now. Okay, diffraction is the ability of the wave to spread out in wavefronts as the wave passes through a small aperture around a sharp edge. Okay, so we know that waves diffract when they encounter obstacles. So what we're going to do now is we're going to watch, oh no, what did I do now? Sorry, let me just go back to this. What we're going to do now is, I think that this is a video. Let me just check something. <sighs> just a second. Uh, there we go. Hang on a second, sorry. There we go, it is a video. I don't know why it's not playing. Okay, so let me go back to current side. And then, we, oh, there we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to watch a little video. It's actually being produced as part of a program that's being produced by Mindset Learn, who are partners with TuneAble um, in producing and supplying um, content for you guys on the TuneAble platform. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So, what you need to understand is 
that these white lines are wavefronts, okay? They're the one wavefronts that we've actually been talking about now. So in other words, every single point on this white line is acting as a point source, which causes another wavefront, which then causes, it's got point sources coming through, causes another wavefront, etc. The gray lines are the direction that the waves actually move, or the black or gray lines, okay? And there, yeah, is a boundary. So what happens is that waves actually bend around this boundary. So as the way this is the actual direction of the waves, okay? And what you need to understand is that as the waves come near this point here, they actually have to make a plan. So it causes a bending of the waves around it, okay? And that there is called diffraction. And I'm going to show you a, um, this is a formal definition of a diffraction. I'm going to show you a, a basic drawing to help you understand exactly what's going on there. So here is your barrier, okay? And let's do it in black. Here are your boundaries. I mean, your wavefronts, right? So now let's say you get a wavefront that's over here. Okay, it hits this. Now remember that the wavefronts, if I just draw one over here, that every point on this thing is acting like a point source, right? Every point on it is acting like a point source. And that there is my new wavefront. And then it has got points that act like a new wavefront. Okay, you get it. Now, what we have here, if I just had to choose another color, again, is every point is acting on a, as a point source, okay? So what happens is we end up with it acting as, I just have to try and get these all semicircles in the same um, amplitude. Okay, so there is my new barrier, right? But now, do you see that this one's a little bit curved? So it ends up having this happen. Okay, let me draw it a bit bigger so you guys can actually see. Um, okay, so here is my barrier, okay? And here is my line wave wavefront as it's coming through. Let's make it over here. Here's my wavefront. Okay. So this wavefront has got a wave that is going to be doing this. Okay. Then we've got this wavefront, and we've got this wavefront, and 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 this. Okay. So what happens? Do you see that the new wavefront? Let me do this in red. The new wavefront looks like this. Here's the new, there, there's the new wavefront. So do you see the top bit? There's a little bit of bending happening. Okay, a little bit of bending. Now, again, at that point there, there's a wavefront forming. So here we go, around the corners. Okay. Okay, it's a terrible way for it. But do you see again, that the one part that I want you to see is that this is bending even more. Okay, it's bending even more than it goes straight. So can you see that it's bending around this barrier? And that is what we saw in the video and I'll show it to you again now. Um, so if I go like this again, so now if I take each one of these points and then I do this, Okay, and then do you see that the new boundary again goes around like that? So if I had to delete the black, I'm going to try, I don't know if I'll get it right. If I had to delete the black, I don't know if it's possible. You will see what the new barriers look like, okay? They kind of look like they're bending around, okay? And that's exactly what you're seeing now. So basically what happens is because of that curve, it causes the end, it's seeing the end of that wave and that causes us to have the wave curve around. Um, so let me just go back to pen and then let's go back to, um, yeah, and I'll show you again. See how it's bending around? Oh, don't ignore the writing. It's bending around. And the reason it's bending around, and I'm just going to draw on here again. So let's draw on here. I'm going to just make it a little bit further so it's getting rid of the purple thing. Should get rid of the purple thing. There we go. Ah, oh, I messed up. 
Hang on a minute. I'm almost there. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll stop it. We'll stop it here. Okay, so what's happening is that on each point of these points, yeah, there is a wave forming. Okay, here's another one. And then here's another one from there. And then from here, there's another one. Terrible circles. And from here, it would be around like that. And from there, it should be around from there. And from there, it would be around from there. And from there, so get the point. So every one of these points is acting like a point source. So then if I choose another color, let's go orange, do you see that it does that type of shape there? And that's exactly what I'm trying to say. So every one of these points on this boundary wall here, I mean on this wavefront here, is acting as a point source and that's why the waves bend around obstacles. Okay, so now let's move on. So now what happens is you'll have each point on the wavefront moving through a slit acts as a point source. Okay, right? But each point source emits wavefronts from the edge of the slit, which we've already said. The black lines, now this is slightly different, okay? What we have now, okay, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to show you the video first. Okay, so what we've got here is basically, in this case, you've got a whole bunch of um you've got two point sources okay well hang on let me just show you something else rather um in this case you've got it doesn't look like you got two point sources. in fact it looks like you've got multiple point sources here but let's just go back to this okay if you've got two point sources okay you've got two slits then what is going to happen is you end up with two um point sources okay so you've got a and you've got b now each point in the wavefront will move through the slit acting as a point source okay so what it happens is that you end up with two sources there's a okay and then yes b okay so it's two point sources or if you want to think of it as two slits so now what happens is and i'm just going to color it in different colors so let's go for this the dotted lines, for example, will be the crest and the solid lines will be the peaks, okay? So if you look over here, these are all um, are, are all your troughs, okay? The dotted lines are your troughs. Okay, and let's just do dotted lines on this side. So the dotted lines uh, on your troughs. Okay, so again, I want you to think about being in the pond, okay? If I was in the pond, we were at the pond, okay, and I had a friend there for a change, okay, and I said, let's see if we can get some interference going. Let's see if we can make the waves interfere with each other. Okay, so what could we do? We could actually um, do this by taking two fishing rods, okay, and we could <laughs> Sorry, um, two fishing rods. Sorry, I was just thinking that this looks like a guy with a big nose. This is a tree. Okay, so we've got two fishing rods we're sticking out into the dam. Okay, here's one and here's a second one. And if we could somehow get them to tap at exactly the same rate at exactly the same time, then we would get this pattern happening over here, where this would be the black lines are crests and the blue lines are troughs. I'm going to do the crests in the red at the moment in a second. So this is a crest, okay, this is a crest, and this is a crest, okay. And then similarly, that's a crest, that's a crest, and that's a crest. Okay, now what you need to realize is, that when the same color hits the same color, we get constructive interference. In other words, when we get a crest meeting a crest, remember what do we get? We get constructive interference. And you guys should know this because we've done this. We've done um, basic constructive and destructive interference. If you've got a trough meeting a trough, a trough plus a trough, it's also constructive interference. So, but if you have, okay, wait, a trough plus a crest, you end up with destructive interference, destructive. And because these are 
actually two dots that are vibrating at exactly the same point and exactly the same, I mean, exactly the same frequency at exactly the same rate and the same height, it means that they can have completely destructive interference. In other words, it's going to be flat lines, okay? Constructive interference means that we're going to have deeper troughs and deeper crests. So if we had to look at this thing and we had to mark off, and why don't we use a highlighter for it? The bits where there is a trough and a crest, okay? Do you agree that yeah, is a trough and a crest? Yeah, is a trough and a crest? Yeah, is a trough and a crest? Okay, so there's a line there. Okay, then yeah, is a trough and a crest? Yeah, is a trough and a crest? Yeah, is a trough and a crest? And there's a trough and a crest, so there's a line there. Um, that's crest, crest, trough, trough. Yeah, is a trough and a crest? Yeah. Mm. Yeah is a trough and a crest. Yeah is a trough and a crest. Yeah is a trough and a crest. Stop it. And yeah is a trough and a crest. So therefore that there is one. And there should be one more there, there, and then Instagram. So those lines there, the yellow lines, these lines, yellow lines, are called nodal lines. They are called nodal lines. So the yellow patches, the yellow patches are total destructive interference, destructive interference, okay, interference, okay, and they're called nodal lines, and the places where there's extra constructive interference and extra destructive interference is called anti-nodal lines, but these are called nodal lines. And guys, if you've ever gone swimming or surfing in the ocean and you get stuck behind some waves and they always tell you to swim sideways to the beach until you get to a flat bit and that's what you're looking for. You're actually looking for the nodal line. You're looking for the bit that's flatter than the rest where the, you can actually move in. So now if we look at this video, so let's try looking at this video again and we're going to start at the beginning. Okay, so what you're seeing here is these bits here where there's a very bright and very dark lines. Um, actually, you know what, let me just go back and de delete all this writing. Um, I'm going to erase all the ink. There we go, now let's try it. Okay, so now what you're seeing here is that obviously there's some bits where there's no interference between the two waves. And what you're seeing is, that's a terrible bit, let's just stop. Hmm. Okay, so what you're seeing here is all the flat bits, those bit there, those are the nodal lines, okay, those are the lines where there is zero disturbance, there's total con destructive interference. The bits where they are much darker and much brighter um, lines um, are basically when you have constructive interference and where you have constructive interference and obviously you're going to have big swells and big dips. In other words, we're going to have big, big crests and big, big troughs. And what happens is that it ends up with, um, and you can see it goes on, um, but you can see it's very obvious where the nodal lines and antinodal lines are. And the antinodal lines, like I said, are the ones that are the inverse of the nodal lines. Right, so where crest and trough meet, we get destructive interference, and the lines of destructive interference are called nodal lines. The lines of constructive interference are called antinodal lines. Okay, so now I've got a little animation from PHET called FET. Um, it's the University of Colorado provide these little animations um, or simulations of what would happen. And if you ever are struggling to visualize something, then I would really suggest you go and look at it because it actually does work very well. So let's look at it. We're going to change it to light. Okay. And what I'm going to do is show the screen. Okay, so at the moment, the screen is showing a dull red, and we've got a light that is emitting a red light that's being emitted from the source. Okay, right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a one-sit barrier here. Okay, if we put a one-sit barrier there and we keep it for a while, do you see we get a bright, broad, one-broad, thing. I just have to get the gap right. 
So let's change this width, a bit narrower. It's a bit different difficult to get the right thing okay that's not working at all so let's make it a little bit wider okay that's pretty but pretty diffuse let's move the barrier up a little bit what you should be seeing is light and dark lines on your intensity graph and the reason for that is because, and let's just change this to a little bit of a different color, shall we? <sighs> Never mind the amplitude. Just sit, I, I'm happy with the amplitude, sorry. Let's use amplitude. Um, I want to change the color. It might be easier for you to see it. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to get the barrier relocation better. And make the width a bit bigger. And what you should be seeing are dark and light lines. And what they're matching is the constructive and destructive interference. Um, so let me just see if I can get a better color. Might work a bit better. No, it's too diffuse. Let's maybe make the amplitude a bit bigger. Okay, so I'm hoping that you can see that there is a very broad single line and then there are dark lines in between. And the reason for that is, for the simple reason, is that what is happening is that when the big broad bit, the bright bit hits this, you're getting constructive interference, you get a big broad bit. When on either side of this, you will see that, okay, so let me see if I can draw on this, I'm not sure if I can. You can see over here and over here, there's black bits. So what's happening is if I had to put a barrier here, you would have, this would be bright green because the fact that that there is the, the, the constructive interference. Then there's a bit here and a bit here, which when I hit the barrier, there's going to be destructive interference. So I end up with a, a, um, I end up with a black barrier. Okay. I'm just going to try one more and see if I can get this to go. So, um, okay. No, we need to move this somehow to make it work better. What about if I did it here? That might work. We'll see. And make this slit width a little bit smaller. Too small. Mm -mm. Okay, um, another thing I wanted to show you with this is if we had a double slit. So if we've got a double slit, what you will get is what I showed you before, is that you'll end up with, and just give it some time to work it out, okay, it will get there, you'll start seeing the nodal lines start to form. Okay, you start getting seeing the nodal lines to form, and those are the lines of a destructive interference and here you can see on the intensity graph it's very obvious that you've got light and dark points and the dark points are obviously where there's destructive interference and the light is when there's constructive interference okay so let's move on so what you saw or should have seen which i was really struggling to show you was that there was a very when you had that go through you got a single very bright board band and then you've got little bits of broader, I mean, bright bits as well, but they are obviously um, not nearly as intense. So we need to talk about the effect of slit width and wavelength on diffraction patterns. And the old curriculum, there was a special formal equation that you had to work out that tells you exactly what um, it tells you exactly what the formula is. Okay, like sine theta equals m lambda over w or something like that. That's no longer in the curriculum. All that you really need to know at the moment is how the slit width and the wavelength of the wave 
actually affect diffraction okay so the formula is the diffraction is proportional to the slit width divide no proportional to the wavelength divided by the slit width in other words what we're saying is that if you increase the wavelength we will increase the diffraction okay but if you increase the slit width okay you will decrease the diffraction so the smaller the slit width the smaller the diffraction the bigger slit width the bigger the diffraction remember the diffraction is the bending around the barriers so let's have a look at what would happen if we this is actually a little video of a type of animation and we're just going to look at how the slit width affects the diffraction pattern so here we go So you can see that the other slit width is quite small. Okay, now we've made it quite broad. Okay, look at that diffraction pattern. Okay, and we take it all the way through and we start it and look at that diffraction pattern. Okay, so the diffraction, which is the bending of the wave. Okay, um, wait, let's just start again. I want to show you something. Okay, wait, let's just start again. So remember we said the diffraction Hang on. Diffraction is proportional to the wavelength over the slit width. Okay. So, in other words, what we're saying is diffraction is proportional to one over the slit width. Okay. They're inversely proportional to each other. So, if we go back here, let's have a look at this. Um, you can see that. What's going on? You can see that, that look how, oh, I hate when it does that. What I want you to notice is look how bent this is, okay, how bendy this is, how curved it is. Whereas if we make the surface bigger, there is much less diffraction, it's not nearly as curved around the edges. And if we make it super wide, then obviously there's almost no diffraction. Now, we're now going to play with wavelength, okay? Now remember we said the diffraction is proportional to the wavelength. Diffraction is proportional to the wavelength. So if we increase the wavelength, we're going to increase the diffraction and vice versa. So let's carry on. So now we're going to decrease the wavelength. Okay, have a look at what's going on. Do you see the diffraction is increasing? And if we decrease the wavelength all the way, look at how it's bending now. It's bending beautifully around there. So by increasing the wavelength, we are increasing the diffraction. Right, now let's move on. So now let's do a couple of exam paper questions. That's what I really wanted to do with you guys was to do some exam paper questions. Um, it says, diffraction provides evidence that light can behave as a wave. Okay. Um, now what you need to understand is that in grade 12, you're going to do the photoelectric effect. Well, probably in grade 12. And what will happen is that they will tell you about the fact that at that point in time, they will tell you about the fact that um, there are conflicting discussions about light. Some people used to think that light was purely particles and some people used to think that light was a wave. And Einstein came up with um, a theory on the dual nature of light that basically said that light acts as both a wave and as a particle and it's called the dual nature of light okay so light acts as both a particle and as a wave and when we get to photoelectric effect next year we can discuss it more okay um einstein actually got his I think, I don't know if I told you this already, Einstein actually got his Nobel Prize not for E equals MC squared. Everybody thinks E equals MC squared is what he's famous for. Um, that is a very cool formula which relates your um, speed of light and your mass to the amount of energy required to travel at the speed of light. Um, however, what he actually got his um, Nobel Prize for 
was for E equals HF, which relates energy and frequency with respect to the photoelectric effect. Okay, now it says define the term diffraction in words. If diffraction is just really the bending of light, okay, that's all it really is. Now it says in the diagram below, a plane wavefront of light emerges, I mean of light of wavelength six times by 10 to the negative seven meters approaches a narrow opening. Diffraction effects are observed on the screen place some distance from the city as shown in the diagram. Describe the pattern obtained on the screen. Okay, so we know that there's going to be bending happening. Okay, we know that there's going to be bending happening. And we know that when it hits the screen, there's going to be a broad, a broad bright brand and then alternating um, bright and dark bands. So there's going to be a broad central, let me just rather write it here, let's call this question one. Number one, it's going to be a broad central bright band and then alternating bright and dark bands um, getting smaller as they travel, getting smaller. Okay, so just to remind you of what we're talking about, we're talking about this. Um, or, yeah, let me, rather, yeah, like this. Basically, what you will have seen is, and I try to show you this, that when you have um, a single slit, you'll end up with a bright central slit, and then, yeah, you can see this is slightly darker, and this is slightly darker, okay, and there should be something slightly darker over there, it's just difficult to see on the screen. The, basically, what happens is, like I said, the crest is going to hit here, yeah. okay, the crest is going to hit here, yeah. because the crest is hitting there, you end up with a bright band here, yeah, and then your trough there, and then there's a little bit of a crest happening there, so there's a crest there, and then so on and so on. So that is why you end up with something that looks like this, um, which is what I've just said. It says two important principles explain diffraction pattern. One is that light is a wave, which means that it can be diffracted. Okay, what's another important principle that explains diffraction pattern? It would be constructive and destructive interference, right? The fact that um, if you have constructive and destructive, if there wasn't constructive and destructive interference, then the wave pattern wouldn't, or diffraction pattern wouldn't emerge at all. Okay, it says write down the name of each of these principles. Okay, well, we don't really have to worry about that too much because it's not really in your curriculum. Let's talk about the width of the slit opening is increased slightly. Describe how this will change the effect on the diffraction pattern observed and the brightness of the diffraction pattern observed. Okay, so let's talk firstly about the diffraction pattern. Do you think the gap will be smaller or bigger? The slit gap, okay, do you think it will be smaller or bigger? Um, so we've made it bigger. Okay, right. So what do you think is going to happen? We said diffraction, diffraction was proportional to wavelength over slit width. And we've said we've just made this bigger. So what happens to the diffraction? The diffraction is going to decrease. Okay. So diffraction, diffraction pattern is going to be less bendy. How would I say this? Less bent or diffracted. Okay, and the brightness of the diffraction pattern observed, it will be the same. What affects the brightness is obviously the amplitude of the light, the amplitude, okay? Remember the amplitude of a wave is either, if it's in sound, it's the loudness, and in, in, in light, it is the um, brightness, okay, so amplitude of the wave has been effective. Now it says the width of the slit is kept constant, but a wavelength of 10 to minus 7 
four times by 10 to the minus seven meters is now used, okay? So before the wavelength was six times by 10 to the minus seven, now the wavelength is four times by 10 to the negative seven. It says, describe how this will affect the diffraction pattern obtained, okay? So what did we say? We said that diffraction is directly proportional to the wavelength, okay? And what has happened to this wavelength? We've gone from six times by 10 to negative seven to four times by 10 to negative seven. So do you agree that the wavelength has gone down? So what does that tell us about the diffraction pattern? The diffraction pattern is going to be less bent, okay, less diffracted. Um, it's going to be um, less diffracted, okay? So it's going to be more of a straight edge going around the circle. Right, now let's look at this question. It says, learn this pass a green light with a wavelength of 534 nanometers through a single slit of width 1.8 times by 10 to negative 4 meters and shines it on the screen. Okay, they set up the apparatus as shown in the diagram. Okay, it says, define the term monochromatic light. Okay, monochromatic light for me used to mean just like a single color. Um, but what you need to understand is that's not the case here. Monochromatic, I know what, that's why you would think that because mono means one and chromatic for you means color. But what we're really talking about is light of the same frequency or singular frequency. So monochromatic light is light of the same wavelength or light of the same frequency. Now it says, Draw the observed pattern and indicate the positions of constructive and destructive interference. Okay, so do you agree that we have a big, broad central band? We're going to have a bright central band, and then we'll have a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and yeah, we'll have a little bit here, and then a little bit more, like over there. And the rest would be black. Okay, these would be black because there is continuous and total absorption of light over here because it is destructive interference. Okay, so what is absorbed? A thing, nice bright central band and then alternating a dark and light. Okay, it says how will the broadness of the central band change if the green light is replaced by the red light? Okay, so let's think about this. You've got Roy. G, Verve, and then you've got ultraviolet, and this side is infrared. So this good here has got the higher frequency, higher frequency. But we know that velocity is equal to, let's try again, velocity is equal to lambda frequency. And because we're talking about light, the velocity is actually C. So C is equal to lambda frequency. And we're saying that we now want to talk about the green light, okay? So which one do you think, and C remains the same, okay? So what did they ask about? They asked about the, we want to know about the wavelength. C stays the same. Now we just need to know which has got a higher frequency. And they want to know if blue, no wait, green has a higher frequency than red. Yes, green has definitely got a higher frequency. So if green's got a higher frequency, it means that its wavelength is going to be smaller. Okay. And then it says, and that means that, because we know the diffraction is, wait, let's work that out, wavelength over W. So if this is smaller, then this whole thing is smaller, and the diffraction is smaller. So the green light is now replaced by a red light. Oh, wait, sorry, the green light is replaced by red light the other way around. So then we're going towards the red light, and I'm right. So it's still going to be smaller no it's got a lower frequency so it's going to have a higher wavelength so if it's a higher wavelength it's going to be greater diffracted so it'll increase okay then the slit width is made smaller if the slit width is made smaller again what's going to happen is we're going to increase it why because increasing the slit width is going to a slit width is inversely proportional to the diffraction. So if we increase the slit width, we will end up getting a bigger denominator, okay, which means that we'll end up decreasing the, the, um, the diffraction. Right, grade 11s, I hope that you've learned something today. Please join us again on Tuesday and we'll continue with this and then move on to new work. Have a great day.